A dark fantasy gamer was given one morn, a game very different from the dastardly norm. It was not about orcs or bandits or raiders, but Mictim, adorable hamster-like critters. The gamer did scoff at the theme this projected, and read to see if it was what he expected. But the strangest thing happened in the strangest way. The dark fantasy gamer's heart grew three sizes that day. He went forthwith to research in more of the game, Till he'd everything read and had no more to gain. With the game set to memory, he was ready to trek forth a master of Mictim that Saturday next. This is the story we'll show you in this month's review. Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Mictim. This game could be sort of a challenge to explain. At first glance, game designer George Mayer's brainchild appears to be a game about playing little anthropomorphized hamsters that frolic about in the forest and indulge in fairy tale whimsy. That's not quite accurate, however. They look like small hamster-like creatures, but they are better described as an old European-style pagan fairy. The game focuses on Ternaya, a major Mictim city. It lies in a forest hidden from human eyes by a sorceress veil that renders mankind unable to recognize these mystical creatures for what they are. While fluffy adventures may appear on the surface to be lighthearted, it is an adventure game. The woods are not just filled with wonder. They also house mundane predators, magical beasts, human blundering, and interdimensional pop musicians performing Oopaland jug band jamborees. I may have made one of those up! You can stay in Ternaya and play the local politics for good or ill. Seek to root out criminals who come up from Undercity to pilfer and connive, venture out to the woods seeking fortune, or even brave the human cities for resources. The engine is a very unique and simple dice pool using D6s. Dice are added together and compared to a target number. Rolling all of your dice and succeeding, that's a standard success. Dice pools are based on five elements that make up a character's personality. A victim's career path will be influenced by his or her love, joy, grief, fear, and anger. In order to get a better success, one must sacrifice the odds. A player may choose to set aside one or more sixers to net better successes. For example, setting aside one die yields two points of damage on an attack roll, and setting two aside yields three. The more exceptional the success you want, the harder it is to hit your target. The character can also get mood markers. These are special pips that add plus one to the character's roll. You get them whenever a six shows on a single die, and you can have up to three. The rolls allow a player to spend a mood marker to buy a bonus die for a single roll. It's not all candy canes and kitten furs, however. Each emotion opposes another, and every mood marker is also a negative one to rolls on the other side of the chart. A character's grief, for example, imposes negatives on anger rolls. Characters are differentiated based on callings. Each has its own unique dynamic and abilities. In addition, each calling has a power spread that allows the player to gear his personality to lean towards a particular role in the bunda. Advancement is fairly quick. Players can purchase new callings and combo the abilities together. This lets the player decide the level of crunch in the game, from non-bread to peanut brittle. Okay guys, welcome to the magical world of Ternaya. Go ahead and introduce your characters, please. Greetings, biologicals. I am a Cybertooth. My specialty is anger, but I show little emotion. You will know my mood by the light in my chest. When it is red, I am angry. Call me Robo Dent. I'm pretty much the opposite of that. I'm a sorcerer from House Barsic, and I love every living thing. Ew. Platonically. I specialize in healing and generally making everyone's life better. Look to me to keep you alive, but don't pick fights we don't need to be in. <sighs> well, I'm supposed to be running this week, but I was usurped. Shut up. But I apparently can't do that, so I'm sad. Since I'm sad, my character is sad. My name is Sparkle Motion, but it doesn't fit me very well, which makes me sadder. I'll make everyone sad with my sad, sad stories about scary, sad, sad, sad. Okay, well, let's get started then. All right, you managed to breach the house. Now make me some detect rolls. I'm too sad to notice anything. <sighs> All right, everyone else notices two fat cats with foul-looking eyes hopping down from the table. They begin to circle you. What are you little creatures doing here? Don't you know what happens to little hamsters that go on big adventures? Yeah, we're going to bat you around till we're bored, and then we're going to eat you up. 
Initializing Sparrow sensors and calibrating for feline particles. Preparing to activate SWAT.exe. That's scary. Is Robotant ready to defend us? I look at his light. It is red. It is always red. Ooh, so you think you're going to fight us? Good. Fighting will amuse us. We're like sharks right now. Fester and Jester hiss loudly at you, filling your tiny hearts with terror. Each of you gain three fear markers. I make the cat sad. I'm gonna be honest, that's starting to be a bit of a bother. No, I mean for real. I've got like a billion in grief. So I'm gonna tell them the terribly sad story of Prissle Whizzle Fizzle Teats. The saddest little kitten to ever meet the scariest end you ever did hear. And overload them with mood markers. Y you're depressing the rules now. I have four dice in fear. I'm gonna set three aside and roll one. Yep, that's an easy nine with my own markers. That's one sad god feline. Heh. <laughs> Jester tries to hit Robodent, but his grief markers are overwhelming his anger rolls. He is literally too sad to hit you. My light remains red. Peas and carrots! Debbie Downer saves the day. Wow, that is an interesting use of the system. I'm going to take a short break to brew the nastiest grudge monster you've ever seen in the entirety of your ungrateful little munchkin life. Alright, so, Mictim, I'm going to be completely honest. I might be a little bit of a fan of this game. I... You know, when you first pitched it, I have to say that I was really skeptical. I mean, this is so far from anything I think I've ever played before that it... You're the reason why I wrote the little poem. The poem at the beginning. I probably am. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you're, you're, my heart did grow the, three sizes that day. You're the dark fantasy gamer who um, discovered Nick Tim. But uh, but no, it's 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 surprising that something that on the surface looks so kidified is not actually kidified. It's no, it's uh, it's surprisingly it's surprisingly deep. I think the point is that it's good for young gamers. It's good for older gamers as well because you can make the story whatever you want. But the system is really easy to understand, really streamlined, and honestly, a lot of fun to play. It's one of those systems that gets as you can get you can make as complex as you want it to be because the interactions between the callings and the the various um, special abilities you can sort of combo together to make better stuff bigger, thank you meaner Be glasses yes better you stuff that's do, the technical oh man they've uh yeah they're like they're straight in the book they're like yeah if you got a frost ball and a hexer and you put them together you can do this now something i i want to mention because i forgot uh, you know we, we all forgot to mention it in the review because that's how we do here um the karma points uh which you can spend to reroll die rolls i really always i always like to see something that lets you do a little dice manipulation it's fun. It's fun. It it's is fun. fun. It's cute. It's good for all sorts of gamers, and I'd like to see more like it. Yeah, I'd like to see more from it. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say mine. I, f I love this game so much. It's uh, I don't know. Just ever since I got it, I read it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually tell you the story of when I found this game. Went ahead and I got a PDF of it and I read it. And it was right after we did Fatal. I was legitimately like not only thinking about do I even want to keep doing roleplay roulette? Do I want to keep role playing? This is awful. I was just miserable. Wow. And um, this uh, this is my palate cleanser. This game like just was a explosion of joy. He made a game that is it, it isn't a, a crunchy strategic exercise in in tactical planning or anything like that, but it is absolutely enjoyable. I recommend yeah. it. Yeah. You guys, yeah, I recommend yeah. checking out this game. And it's not expensive. I no, mean, not it's at all. What? I don't remember, but you can find it on drivethroughrpg.com where you can also find these awesome little uh, oh, what, show, show cards. them what these are. They, yeah. they have the classes on them and all the class abilities so that you've got a quick little reference. They're kind of yeah. like the spell cards you can get for D&D, but you can get these at drivethroughrpg.com, you can get them at mechtem.com, you can get them at Grimoker Games. Does he have any plans to expand on it? Yes, he's already, uh, he's already, working on he's already teased a new calling. You can see that at the website again, we're going to link it up, and it's awesome. So Roleplay, Roleplay Roulette recommends Mictim. Hey guys, I'm Earthzilla, and I'm here to tell you that you can watch other Roleplay Roulette videos by clicking the links. Some will be here, others will be here. You can watch our other show, Film Inflicted Trauma, Edge may be leaked or it may not. That's a surprise, even to me.